Hymenopterans, which are the ants, bees, and wasps, as you know, uh, are often highly social. There are some solitary uh, species of hymenopterans, uh, and that sociality is driven in large part by the use sociality that is downstream of their unusual genetics, their haplodiploid, uh, which uh, in it means that uh, all of the females are diploid just like we are. Uh, we have two copies of all of our uh, chromosomes, but the males are haploid. They only have one copy. And that has all sorts of fascinating effects, including that, for instance, full sisters are three quarters related to one another, and they're only half related to their mothers. And so, um, so kin selection uh, theory suggests uh, they are more likely to be interested in the production of more sisters than they are in reproducing on their own. Um, Which I'll just add is why the stinging bees, the uh, stinging apparatus is actually the ovipositor. It's the egg layer that has been modified into a weapon because they don't need it as an egg layer because they're better off facil facilitating the reproduction of their mother with full siblings than they are of retaining the capacity to reproduce themselves. Right. Um, now that you know that logic only holds for full siblings. For half siblings, they're a little bit less related to their half siblings than they would be three. It's related to their half siblings than they would be related to their own. Um, children and that three eighths is a probability whereas they're they'd be exactly half related to their own kids um we can i'd i'd be happy to go on endlessly about the genetics of haplodiploidy another time as i used to with my students but this is not the place um although one of the other interesting uh effects of the haplodiploid system in hymenopterans again ants bees and wasps is that males don't have sons males only have daughters um and sons therefore males also don't have fathers um, they only have um, they only have mothers, um, so all of that is is which makes for a kind of a fraught relationship. Yeah, with whom? Between these fatherless sons and their mothers, who are wrongly described as queens, but are really slaves of the colony. Anyway, it's not fraught at all. They're hundred percent related to their moms, right? Which could be rough. I don't know. No, no, not helpful. Um, so it's been long assumed that the behaviors of the social uh, insects were innate, genetic, right? Not socially learned. Uh, but new research suggests uh, slightly otherwise. So, uh, no, not yet. <laughs> take, take my screen off while I scroll to the top um, here. Okay, now you can put my screen back on. Um, this published, um, I believe this week, or at least very recently, in um, PLOS Biology. So this is an open access journal. Um, high quality journal. Bumblebees acquire alternative puzzle box solutions via social learning, uh, published by a number of people out of Queen Mary University of London. And I will just read uh, first the introduction and then the abstract, and then we'll talk about it a little bit, uh, or the first paragraph or so of the introduction. The diversity of behaviors observed in some social, in, in some insect societies is on a par with or exceeds that of some mammals and includes the construction of architecturally complex climate controlled nests and the division of labor between foraging brood care and nest defense indeed outside the human realm their nesting structures are unparalleled in terms of their regularity sophistication and their scale in proportion to body size there is profound variation in foraging specializations architectures and social organizations not just between related species of social insects but more intriguingly even within species while these specializations have historically been viewed as a limited set of pre-programmed responses to external stimuli resulting from evolutionary trial and error processes, this innate repertoire is supplemented by a remarkable capacity for learning that has been recognized for decades. The acquisition of the honeybee uh, dance language is perhaps the best characterized example of social learning described thus far in an invertebrate, and as early as 1884, Darwin suggested that nectar robbing of flowers by bumblebees could spread socially. I did not remember that, that Darwin had suggested this. Uh, then they've got, um, what they actually did here is uh, to investigate social learning, a two act action control experimental design is helpful as this can help exclude alternative explanations. Uh, such designs have been used to great effect to investigate social learning in chimpanzees, with demonstrators trained to obtain food from a panpipes apparatus in one of two different ways, and observers acquiring their demonstrator's technique. Meanwhile, without a demonstrator, no chimpanzees acquired either technique. So you seed, you seed uh, the culture of chimpanzees with a way to solve a problem, and the chimps pick up that way to solve the problem, but they don't solve the problem at all uh, when you don't seed it, at least in the experiment here cited. Um, 
Meanwhile, without a demonstrator, oh, more recently in Great Tits, demonstrators were trained to open a puzzle box in one of two possible ways before seeding them back into wild populations. The demonstrator's preference is that's birds, by the way. Great Tits. You knew that. I did. Yeah. Um, the demonstrator's preferences spread throughout these groups and were maintained long term, even when the alternative behavior was discovered, and even though the two variants were entirely arbitrary. So interesting, right? Two um, arbitrary, apparently equally good uh, ways to solve a problem uh, when one or the other is seeded into a population, that's the one that spreads when uh, when a demonstrator is fed into a population. And it remains the consistently preferred one, even when some other non-demonstrator birds uh, stumble across, invent, uh, whatever, learn uh, the other way of doing things, their way, uh, which is supposedly neither better nor worse, although that's going to be really hard to actually obtain in a, in, in a real world situation, um, the, the newly discovered way does not end up winning the day. Um, for the present study- As you would expect, in my opinion. Yeah, um, with the big caveat that the two ways of doing things have to really be equivalently good. And that's, that's a, for me, that's a, that's All a, that's else a big being equal, caveat. you would expect yeah. that conservatism. Uh, for the present study, we designed two option puzzle box feeders informed by previous work in bumblebee problem solving, which replicated those used to investigate the spread of arbitrary behavioral differences in great tip populations. We then developed an open diffusion protocol that allowed the spread of box opening through the group to be recorded and seeded colonies of bumblebees with demonstrators trained to perform one of the two possible behavioral variants. These novel foraging techniques were successfully acquired by untrained bees via social learning. And um, there's a lot more to say here, but uh, as as they allude to there in the introduction, which is uh, odd, um, but they allude to the results in the discussion there, um, they uh, this pref box opening behavior spread through colonies seated with a demonstrator trained to perform one of the two possible behavioral variants, and the observers acquired the demonstrated variant. This preference persisted among observers even when the alternative technique was discovered. And in controlled diffusion experiments that lacked a demonstrator, some bees spontaneously opened the puzzle boxes, but were significantly less proficient than those that learned in the presence of a demonstrator. So much as what has previously been described, discovered and described in both chimps and great tits, which are in turns uh, mammal and bird, which are known to be, uh, you know, have complex brains, highly social, highly capable of learning with cultural transmission of information. Here we have a very similar result in bumblebees. Now, these authors are not going so far as to call this, um, this uh, evidence of culture because bumblebees die out. Uh, bumblebees are effectively annuals with only the queen surviving over wintering. And so you don't have um, the acquisition of this learning taking place um, multi-generationally, um, but you do have it within uh, the season uh, that, that it is happening. And thus, as the authors say, uh, this is likely to be a necessary precursor to, if not um, sufficient to uh, describe an organism as having culture. Yeah, I, frankly, I find that distinction a little arbitrary. I get why it is. They're, they're using a definition of culture that requires cross-generational yeah. um, uh, transmission. Yeah, and that is a real distinction. Yep. On the other hand, all of the capabilities here, uh, transmitting a, a behavioral phenomenon like that across a population, uh, I would say, A, it raises questions because not all hymenopterans are annuals. And therefore, if the same capacity existed in something like, let's say, thatch ants, yeah, uh, then you would expect it to transmit. You would expect a colony to have this capacity and to transmit it um, through generations. Generations being a little bit of a weird term because you've got pres right. presumably a single queen, although there are things that happen when a queen dies. But anyway, all that aside, the reason that you would expect a group of bees who had learned a technique from a demonstrator to be resistant to the acquisition of a new technique, though equally good, is that it wouldn't be equally good because they would be less proficient at the one they hadn't practiced. Precisely. And so you would yes. expect this resistance to doing it the new way. And the real question is how much better does the new way have to be than the old way in order to overcome that conservatism, which then becomes a model for exactly what we have in civilization 
where there's a tendency to want to do things the way we've done them, yep. which is the right tendency. And then there is sometimes a benefit that is worth engaging in the tra changeover cost. Well, and I think here here is one of the places where um, so uh, bumblebees being annuals and humans decidedly not um, will make the answer to that question potentially very different. Right, like if if you've got a colony that has a, a a months months long a lifespan measured in months, rather than um, a societal lifespan that could possibly be measured in millennia or at least centuries, uh, it's a very different analysis to say, okay, like I don't care how many times you manage to do the thing, you're going to be dead next month, and it probably doesn't make sense for you to learn a totally new technique when what you're doing is equally good or even um, just slightly less good. And I will say actually um, that with regard to the bee work, um, it was like they had like a turn a red thing counterclockwise or turn a blue thing counterclockwise or clockwise. I don't, I don't remember the specifics, but there was a red and a blue tag. And red is right near the edge of what bumblebees can see very well. And so when there is no demonstrator, blue tends to be the thing that is discovered. Mm. Uh, they both work equally well. And the bees can see the red, um, but they don't find it first. That said, when the demonstrator is um, trained on red and blue is discovered in that colony, red still persists. So um, that, that suggests that sort of like sensory exploitation is not going on here, right? Like that, oh, well, we can see this thing, but actually, you know, George over here has discovered, Georgina over here has discovered, um, you know, the thing that we can all see better. So let's go there. It's like, you know what? We're, we're all going to be dead soon. Let's just stick with what we know. Well, again, this is, there's going to be a threshold of superiority. And in fact, I didn't read the paper, so I'm just learning about the, the technique. But it does seem to me that you can actually, there, you've got a continuum of difficulty that you could deploy that would cause you to find the threshold at which the changeover was worth paying. Right. And it would be interesting whether that changeover, that threshold was at a different place at a different point in the season. Yes, right, precisely. Um, but anyway, that is really interesting. And that does sound like such a fun experiment. Doesn't it? Right. There are a lot of boring things you can do in, no, this, uh, this looks... in biology graduate school, but that sounds like fun. Yeah, no, it, it does. and. Um... Yeah, social learning in, in bees, um, and just you know reminding us again uh, that we uh, imagine ourselves uh, the only ones who are capable of the things that we do on this planet uh, at our peril. It's it's silly, right? You know, there there are a lot of other ways to be, and many other organisms do things better than we do, and uh, and many do things worse. But also, there are a lot of other ways to arrive at similar kinds of skills. And here we have an example of bumblebees. Ways to be a bee.